Okay, so my name is Stacey Flowers and I am a self-published author. I am claiming that because this year, I'm just moving my puzzle out a little bit out of the way, because this year I'm going to self-publish my books. Now, this I want to talk about this because it's going to turn into a bit of a journey and what I want to do over the next 14 days is document some of that journey and I want to document it because first of all I'm learning I've learned that I'm the type of person who like just processes so well through talking out loud I always do better when I talk about something out loud and I really want my books to do well and I've written three I'm now in a place where there's kind of like four so I just kind of want to talk about like what the books are about, what I'm doing, why I'm self-publishing. I just want to kind of talk about that in this particular video. And then over the next 14 days, ideally, I'm going to vlog the journey of finishing a fourth manuscript. So um, the books that I'm writing, I'm writing a craft book, I'm writing a memoir, I'm writing two self-help nonfictions. And originally it was three books. Originally it was a book about money. It was a memoir about happiness, memoir, my memoir and happiness. And then it was a book about speaking. And what has since happened with my editor is my book about happiness when she was doing the developmental edits on it. She's just like, this is really good, but you're switching voices. And I think that there are two books in here. I think that in this book, you have a memoir where you should just focus on this story and develop it. And that is your memoir. And then you have the book about happiness and you should just focus on that being a self-help book about happiness. So when I got the developmental edits back, I kind of read through what she saw and I saw it too. And I was like, oh, you're right. These are separate things. And so at the time, I thought that I had completed a memoir, but really it was just sort of like this Frankenstein thing that was put together. So that is why it's kind of four books, because my editor hasn't looked at my third manuscript, which was the book about money, because I actually just finished it last month. The three books, I wrote majority of them over the last three years from 2020 until now I've been working on these books and each manuscript is about 55,000 words and that's the amount of words that I wanted to send off to my editor to start with and getting the feedback back about the the happiness book I'm like okay first of all I'm becoming a much stronger writer and that was making me very happy that she could see these two distinct books inside of it um that made me very happy but then it made me think about okay since I'm choosing the self-publishing route and since I'm still in the phase of creating, like what could I do to, to make this journey easier, I, I think is a word that I would use here maybe, like a little bit easier in the sense of like, becoming a writer is um, something that I've been very reluctant. I've been an author for a very long time. My first book, I, I want to say I published in 2011 and, or 2012. And so I've always been like, I'm an author, I'm not a writer. And people will be like, well, what's the difference between an author and a writer? And I'm like, an author is somebody who has written a book. A writer is someone who writes for a living. Like they're pros, they're, they're really into like, like the way words come together on a page versus I feel like almost anyone can become an author because it's just a matter of you putting enough words on paper and publishing it. But I feel like what has happened in me writing these three books is I've become an, a writer. Like I've become someone who is terribly concerned with my sentence structure, like super involved with like whether or not it feels the way that I want it to feel. Like I, the way that I imagine writers sit around and think about their work, I'm like, I think that's what I'm doing now. I think I think I'm a writer. And so um so there's a part of me that's like I just want to it helps me to be able to process this identity that I'm wearing or becoming stepping into it helps me to be able to process that and then from a business perspective I've chosen to self-publish and so because I'm self-publishing that means I am going to build another publishing company but I'm also taking on all of the roles that a publisher would take on and I want my books to be successful I don't want them to 
um, only be read by me and my family and friends. I want them to be read by the people who I think would benefit from them. And I think in order to be successful at that, I want to be able to have the space to strategize out loud. I'm one. I'm the type of CEO who who needs to talk out loud, but I don't like talking out loud to feedback. I like just saying it out loud. It's like when I'm talking out loud, I'm really just thinking until I'm actually asking questions, but I don't ask questions early on. And so with me knowing that I'm doing these parallel journeys of embracing the identity of writer and also starting another company, I'm like, I need a creative space to be able to, to do this so that I don't have it all up here. Um, and then and then I was just like, there are a lot of writers that I watch here on YouTube. Christina C. Jones is one of them. And I, and I just was introduced to her work this year. And I love that she shows herself as a writer because it's just very helpful to me. LaSalle Sanberry, um, she's a, a, a traditionally published writer that I've been following for a very long time. And I was just like, oh, okay, I will... I, I like that model that 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 could be something that's helpful to me in this journey. So that's the reason why um, the reason why I'm choosing to self publish over traditionally publish is because from 2020 to 2022, I have four publishers um, offer me book deals. I had one publisher offer me a three book deal and then I had um, three other publishers reach out for book deals. And so to be asked by major publishers for my story or for me to write a story like in and of itself is like mind-blowing and one of the publishers that asked was like my dream publisher if there was ever a publishing company that I was going to work with it would be this publishing company and initially when I was asked I was like okay yeah you know I'll definitely think about this I'll definitely consider it but I think when I ended up getting the second one I was just like well what do they see that I don't see and then by the time I was offered sort of the three book deal I was like okay there's something here there's there's something here that is even bigger, better, more than what I can see. And rather than signing that away to a publishing company, um, I rather not do that. I rather own that. Things that I've learned from um, two people that I consider to be cyber mentors, Beyonce and Yama Van Sant, is the necessity of owning your art and owning your work. And there are thousands of beautiful reasons to go with a traditional publisher and maybe if I was in the fiction space maybe I would be a little bit more inclined to do that but because I'm in the nonfiction space and I want to be able to own my words and I want to be able to own my word my work for a lifetime it makes more sense for me to self-publish and because I have a built-in platform whether I'm speaking on stage or I'm selling directly to my YouTube audience or any of my other social platforms. I actually have a built in platform. So from a marketing perspective there, I, I would still be doing the heavy lifting in that. And I also went to a conference where someone who is, I think published over like 12 books flat out was like, if you go with a traditional publisher, you're still going to be doing all of the work. The biggest thing is that you lose the access and the relationships. But if you're patient enough with yourself and the book, is good enough you'll get that access and you guys know I like the scenic route so I'm like okay I think my my book books are going to be good enough I think I'm patient enough to general to 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 wait for access to those things and when I say access I mean things like if I were to go with a traditionally published author or excuse me if I were to become a traditionally published author my best guess is whenever my publishing date is for these books I would be able to be on the shelves of Barnes and Nobles as a self-published author, I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to learn how to do that. And that's going to be fascinating because once I learn, I will know. And there you go. Um, so things like that, things like having access to certain materials so that my books feel a certain way or look a certain way. Uh, I think the learning curve on building all of that, the learning curve on finding an editor and finding a, a formatter and all of these different things, those are things that I would be able to bypass if I went with a traditional publishing company but I'm willing to go along on the journey because I, I want my own publishing company and if I could say a publishing company that I was modeling myself after it would be like Hay House by Louise L. Hay. I adore the work that she put puts out. I think her authors are amazing. I love the systems that she puts around her authors. I, I adore the clarity of the type of work that she puts out. And I love the fact that her publishing company got started with her book, You Can Heal Your Life, I want to say in 1986. And it may have taken her a while 
to it to develop it into Hay House, but eventually she was able to do something like that. And I would love to see my publishing company do the same. And I think that when I want something, it's better to, to bet on myself than it is to bet on anyone else. And so that is the reason why I'm choosing to self-publish is that having four publishers reach out to me with beautiful offers for work that isn't even completed yet is enough of a vote of confidence to tell me that I have something that could be incredible. And I, while I'm de building my confidence in my writing and I'm building my skill in running a publishing company, I am going to borrow the belief of these four different publishers in me to produce these works and get these things done. And so that is incredibly exciting and it's amazing and I feel really good about that. And so where I'm at today is, as I've said, I've written three manuscripts and one of the three manuscripts has been turned into two manuscripts. I'm going to set the money manuscript to the side because it's the one that I just recently finished. It hasn't been edited from a financial place. Investing in four books being published or excuse me, being edited at the same time is quite a hefty investment. So I'm going to set the money manuscript to the side for right now and I'm going to finish the speaker manuscript, the um, happiness self-help book and my memoir, I'm going to finish those two books. So where I'm at right now is I'm actually back to a space where I need to write the happiness book and I need to write the memoir because before it was a completed 55,000 word man manuscript. But now because it's was separated, it's like very, it's, it, I can't even say that it's chopped. It's like, it's it's almost like a full rewrite on both of those. And so that's essentially what I'm going to be documenting over the next 14 days, because I would like to challenge myself to put the words on the page. Because what I know now, having edited and written these books and gotten feedback, is that the faster you get that first draft out, the the better the experience is overall, at least for me, maybe because I'm stepping into the identity, but the faster you get that draft out, the better, because you it's like you have material to work with. So I wanna sit down and I wanna say the memoir is maybe starting with like 5,000 words. And the reason the memoir is starting with 5,000 words is because there's a story that I told in the original happiness book that it is a story that needs to be a book as opposed to a story that was shared over a couple of chapters. And so expanding that story into a full book, that's a task and a half. That's 50,000 words to figure out how to do that. And then um, I, the the other manuscript, right? You, you could then be like, okay, well, the other manuscript has 50,000 words. The reason it's actually not sitting at 50,000 words is because we made a significant structural edit to where the purpose of the book has been changed. And for that reason, it's probably dropped back down to like maybe seven to 10,000 words. And then those other 30 to 30 to 40 ish words feels like it does, it's not a waste. It could potentially feel like a waste. It's not a waste. It is a it's like, it's the words I needed to, it's the word, you know how like sometimes when you know you're writing for somebody else to read something, you write differently than if you were just writing for yourself. So it's almost like those are the words that I felt like I needed to say, as opposed to the words that I really do need to say. And so it's two rewrites on that. And I want to sit down and rewrite it. And since I'm in a creative writing space, I think that I will do really good at rewriting it because... I just finished the manuscript on the money book and that was surprisingly easy to finish that manuscript. And so if I put on the same sort of hat, I think I can do it. And so that's where we're starting. I am a writer and I'm having some books come out this year and I'm very excited about that. And you guys get to watch that journey. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.